When people hear the term deep lead, their minds often drift to the famed gold fields of Victoria, where ancient buried rivers yielded some of the richest alluvial gold deposits in Australian history. However, few realise that Western Australia, a land better known for its vast open pit gold mines, also harbours its own deep leads, hidden beneath layers of laterite and sediment. Among them, the Kanauna Deep Lead stands as one of the most significant, yet least understood. A buried river system that once carried gold through the eastern goldfields millions of years ago. Though overshadowed by the state's famous hard rock deposits, this forgotten channel of gold played a crucial role in Western Australia's mining history, leaving behind a legacy that still lingers beneath the surface. Unlike many of the region's rich quartz reefs, where gold was locked within hard rock, the Deep Lead was an ancient riverbed, long buried and forgotten, its gravelly sediments carrying the remnants of untold riches. For years, prospectors and geologists alike were captivated by this subterranean river of gold, a relic of a much wetter and more dynamic landscape than the semi-desert that characterises the region today. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. The Kanauna Deep Lead was formed millions of years ago, during a period when Western Australia's climate was vastly different from today. In what is now a dry, harsh landscape, powerful rivers once flowed, carving deep channels through the terrain. These waterways transported gold, eroded from nearby quartz reefs, and deposited it in their beds, along with sand, gravel and clay. Over time, changing geological conditions led to the burial of these ancient rivers beneath layers of laterite, clay and hardpan. The Deep Lead is essentially a paleo channel, a term used to describe ancient river systems that no longer flow on the surface. These buried channels often contain concentrations of alluvial gold trapped within the gravels that once lined the riverbed. Unlike primary gold deposits, where gold remains in its original host rock, Deep Leads represent a secondary deposit, gold that has been naturally eroded, transported and reconcentrated by water movement. At Kanauna, the Paleo Channel follows an ancient river course that meanders beneath modern day ground levels, sometimes cutting through soft clays and lateritic soils, and at other points through compacted gravels cemented together over geological time. The nature of the gold-bearing gravels varies across the length of the lead, with some areas containing coarse gold nuggets, and others holding much finer particles. The depth of the channel, combined with the richness of its pay streaks, made the Kanauna Deep Lead one of the most coveted alluvial gold deposits in Western Australia's history. There are very little studies that look at the Deep Lead's age or its existence in general, but we can still piece together a rough idea of its age based on the formation of laterites. Laterites are crucial in estimating the age of paleo channels, like the Kanauna Deep Lead, because they provide a minimum age constraint for when the river was last actively flowing. Thus, the Kanauna Deep Lead is likely late Cretaceous to early tertiary in age, with it existing at some point between 100 to 20 million years ago. The Yulgarn Craton underwent intense weathering and laterite formation during the Mesozoic and early tertiary. Laterites form when prolonged weathering breaks down rock minerals, leaving behind a highly leached, iron and aluminium rich soil layer. This process occurs in warm, humid environments with intense seasonal rainfall, which helps to dissolve and remove more soluble elements like silica, sodium and calcium, while concentrating iron and aluminium oxides. Leaving behind a highly leached iron and aluminium rich soil layer, the result is a distinctive red to brown crust known as laterite which can form thick, hard layers over ancient landscapes. The Cretaceous was a greenhouse world, meaning that global temperatures were significantly higher than today. So even though Western Australia was much closer to the South Pole at this time, it still experienced a warm and humid climate due to high CO2 levels, the absence of polar ice caps, warm ocean currents and intense volcanic activity. This allowed for large river systems that contributed to the formation of gold-rich paleo channels like the Kanauna Deep Lead. But this begs a fascinating question. What about the rivers that predated the Kanauna Deep Lead? If the Kanauna Deep Lead formed between 100 to 20 million years ago, then earlier river systems must have existed before it. The natural questions to this are, 
where did they go, and are they still buried or were they eroded away? Western Australia has an extremely long geological history, with landscapes evolving over billions of years. Before the Kanauna Deep Lead, there must have been even older river systems that shaped the terrain and moved gold from eroding quartz reefs into valleys and floodplains. Thus it's very possible that unexplored paleo channels exist. Many deep leads in WA were discovered by chance during mining operations. If older buried river systems exist beneath thick laterites, they could be invisible to surface prospecting, but detectable with geophysical studies. With that being said, many of them were likely destroyed by later erosion. Deep weathering and climate changes over time would have removed older deposits before laterite formation capped the remaining ones. If an old river was buried before major erosion, it could still be preserved as a deep lead, but if it remained exposed, it was likely destroyed. The most likely scenario is that some older river systems were completely eroded, removing their gold deposits. Others may still be buried under sediments, waiting to be discovered. The Kanauna deep lead itself may have followed an even older riverbed, meaning it could be a reworked paleo channel where new gold was deposited on top of much older sediments. The Kanauna goldfield was first discovered in 1893, not long after the famous Coolgardie and Kalgoorlie rushes. Initially prospectors found gold in surface alluvials, shallow easily worked deposits in modern creek beds and gullies. However, it quickly became apparent that some of the richest deposits lay buried at much greater depths. Unlike the more famous Golden Mile, where gold was found in quartz veins and extracted from hard rock, Kanauna's deep lead deposits required a different approach. Early miners relied on shaft sinking and tunnelling to reach the gold bearing gravels. The process was slow and labour intensive, with timber supports required to prevent tunnel collapses in the soft unconsolidated sediments. What set the Kanauna deep lead apart was its sheer richness. In some sections, the gravels were incredibly productive, yielding ounces of gold per cubic yard of material. Reports from early miners describe how, in places, the gold was so abundant that it could be seen glistening in the gravel before washing. As mining expanded, it became clear that the deep lead followed a winding path beneath the ground, varying in width and depth. Some parts of the channel were wide enough for two horse-drawn drays to pass side by side, an unusual feature for an alluvial deposit, which typically narrows as it deepens. However, the same soft sediments that held the gold also made mining a dangerous endeavour. Without the natural support of rock walls, tunnels were prone to collapse, and water often seeped in from hidden aquifers. At its peak, the Kanauna Deep Lead was among the richest alluvial gold deposits in the colony. Individual claims produced thousands of ounces of gold, with some lucky miners striking pockets of gold where coarse nuggets and flakes had accumulated in natural traps within the ancient riverbed. The greatest concentrations of gold tended to be found where the river had slowed, inside bends, behind obstructions, or in depressions where heavy particles settled. The original river that formed a Kanauna deep lead was likely quite substantial in size, but its exact dimensions are difficult to determine with absolute certainty. However, based on studies of similar paleo channels in Western Australia's goldfields, including those in the Kalgoorlie region, a reasonable estimate of its width can be made. The Kanauna deep lead varies in width along its course, ranging from 30 metres to over 200 metres wide in different sections. The original river that created the lead was likely even wider, potentially several hundred metres across at its peak flow, particularly in areas where it meandered or formed floodplains. Wide meandering rivers tend to deposit gold in specific areas, such as inside bends, natural riffles and depressions. This explains the varying gold concentrations found within different parts of the Kanauna Deep Lead. The deepest parts of the channel tend to be narrower, but the river would have spread out much wider in low energy sections. By the early 20th century, many of the richest sections of the Deep Lead had been worked out, and mining became more difficult as the easiest gold was extracted. The increased costs of deeper tunnelling, combined with the depletion of high grade gravels, led to a gradual decline in production. Additionally, new discoveries elsewhere, such as the gold rush to Canada's Klondike, drew many miners away from Kanauna. The town itself, once a thriving gold rush settlement with thousands of inhabitants, dwindled in population. 
By the mid 20th century, Kanauna had become a ghost town. It's once rich deeply buried beneath layers of history and forgotten by all but a few prospectors and geologists. Despite this decline, the potential for undiscovered gold still exists. Much of the deep lead remains inaccessible, hidden beneath modern infrastructure or too deep for traditional prospecting methods. The risk of subsidence caused by old unrecorded mine shafts and tunnels collapsing is a reminder of the immense underground workings that once crisscrossed the area. The burial of the Kanauna deep lead was a slow and complex process that unfolded over millions of years. A combination of climate change, surface weathering, sediment accumulation and laterite formation sealed the once flowing river beneath layers of earth. Here's what might have happened to seal the deep lead. Step 1. The river gradually fills with sediment, 50 to 30 million years ago. The Eocene to Oligocene saw the start of intense laterization, which broke down the rocks through chemical weathering and washed finer sediments into lower lying areas, partially filling the deep lead. Instead of the river simply drying up, it likely became sluggish, with sediment accumulation outpacing its ability to transport material. Water still flowed intermittently, but the channel was becoming choked with lateritic clays and debris. Step 2. The climate begins to change. Between 30 to 20 million years ago, the overall trend in Western Australia was towards dry conditions, but it was not yet a true desert climate. The once deep river transformed into a series of shallow interconnected channels with seasonal flooding. The landscape became more stable, and without strong water flow, the river was no longer able to clear out accumulating sediments. Some parts of the lead may have still seen intermittent water flow, but major river activity was coming to an end. As laterization reached its peak 30 million years ago, it hardened and sealed the sediments already filling the deep lead. The remaining watercourses in the region were rerouted, cutting off flow into the lead. The laterite crust acted as a cap, preserving the gold-rich gravels beneath it. Step 3. Modern erosion shapes the landscape, 20 million years to present. By the mid to late Miocene, Australia's climate had fully transitioned into a much drier regime. Erosion removed parts of the laterite layer, exposing small sections of the buried deep lead, which allowed gold prospectors in the 1890s to discover its presence. And thus, the river that once carved the Kanauna deep lead was eventually replaced by a fragmented, salt lake dominated drainage system influenced by the drying climate of Western Australia. While modern flood channels still exist, they no longer resemble the powerful gold transporting river that existed tens of millions of years ago. Instead, the ancient river left behind a hidden legacy beneath the surface, preserved in the gold rich sediments of the Kanauna deep lead. Today with advancements in exploration techniques, there is renewed interest in deep lead deposits. Using geophysical surveys and drilling, Mining companies have identified possible extensions of the Kanauna deep lead that may still contain substantial gold reserves. Whether these deposits will ever be mined again remains uncertain, but the allure of Kanauna's hidden river of gold continues to captivate those who dream of striking it rich. The Kanauna deep lead stands as one of Western Australia's greatest alluvial gold deposits. Beneath the dry, unassuming surface of the goldfields, this ancient buried river carried gold in extraordinary quantities, enriching those lucky enough to uncover its secrets. While the easy gold may be gone, the Kanauna Deep Lead's legacy remains. It's a story of geological wonder, of struggle and triumph, and of the ever-present lure of gold. A story that still whispers beneath the earth, waiting for those to listen. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.